And if you had a day off to see the sights in the south of France, basically perfect. Now, back home, Americans embrace overnight sports sensations, which is why they fell in love with Lance Armstrong two years ago. But his long list of first-evers and youngest-evers has created some unrealistic expectations. Indre may only be eight years his senior, but light years his superior. I mean, they expect Lance Armstrong to be Miguel Enderine when they, when they don't realize that Miguel is 31. This is his 11th tour. His first two he never finished. He was in... He was in the bottom half of the Tour de France for a long time and now he's only blossomed into what he is and and people don't realize that at, at, at the third tour and at 23 years old they expect you to to be with Miguel Enderine all the time and that's just you just can't do that in a, in a race like this this is a man's race and it's hard for a, a, a kid to compete on Saturday, Lance showed us he's learning how to win. He led the Peloton for 125 miles. And in every one of those miles, he told us he believed he would win. The quartet of leaders became a one-on-one -on -one battle with Sergei Uchikov. Lance Armstrong straight on him here, and that's a good move, and he looks cool. And in fact, behind race radio, telling me that in fact, the two riders, Buena Hora and Ken Gielta, are watching each other. They don't want to make the move first, and these two riders have got a great lead. Uchikov is along with Lance Armstrong. They really have got to keep going together now because they'll dive off this mountain. Before you know it, they'll be in the streets of Rebel. Rebel, rather, sorry. Well, I think you said that because Lance Armstrong really is reveling in the glory at the moment. He's so happy to be at the front of the Tour de France. He had a very hard time in the mountains. He tried to stay with the leaders. He tried to get across to Alex Zula, but at the moment, this really is his terrain. When this man feels he can get a victory, he just wants to go for it. And Armstrong now in the front and doesn't want to be there. So he now looks over to Uchikov to see if he'll take the lead. He's forced Uchikov into the first position on the road. There's the left-hander. It won't be very long now before they can see at the end of this big, long straightaway the Coca-Cola banner across, which signifies the end of the stage. And it's going to be about now where Sergei Uchikov realises he made a mess of that. He shouldn't have gone round the corner into the lead because Lance has him where he wants him now and he's not going to come by him again until he goes for the gears and gives him just about all the speed he has left in those legs after what has been a tremendously long day in the saddle for all of the breakaway. Uchikov is going to ride close to the barriers on the left so Armstrong must come over on his right shoulder give him only one way Armstrong now begins to make his move Uchikov goes immediately but goes right to the centre of the road Armstrong holding the back wheel of Uchikov very shortly Armstrong is going to have to kick but I don't think he's got it Uchikov has everything Uchikov takes it on the line as far as I'm concerned I mean I was I got last place there was two guys there and I was second so I'm Bitter, very bitter, very disappointed, but I, like I said, I'm trying to turn it into something positive, so I think that it, this anger and this disappointment is going gonna, gonna to help me to recover. I mean, I, I'm a fighter, you know, I have to keep fighting. Lance, keep fighting and you'll become the next American cycling hero. The first one since this man, now rolling along on four wheels, who used to be more recognizable on two. American Greg LeMond provided the greatest comeback in the history of this sport. In 1989, two years after being shot while hunting, he won the Tour de France by the smallest margin ever. The unforgettable memories on the Champs-Élysées were almost a dream, unlike the harsh reality of a disease that eventually shortened his career. Throughout my career, I have had some obstacles to overcome, but I'm now confronting one that I'm not able to surmount. I have been diagnosed with a muscular disorder called mitochondrial myopathy. This condition does not allow me to perform at the level I must to compete in cycling. Therefore, today I must announce my retirement from cycling. So what's left for Le Monde? In part, the reflection on a career that didn't end the way it should have. I'm leaving the sport unsatisfied, and I miss, and I've missed it for the last three years. I miss being in that great a shape, being in the front, being competitive, being there to counterattack. To, I mean, there's nothing better than being at your best in the Tour de France. And it's a game for three weeks that lasts. It's like a soap opera, and you get to be the main actor. That's fun. <laughs> Greg, you don't have to tell us it's fun. We had just as much fun watching you. By the way, if you're ever on a bike hike through Minnetonka, Minnesota, stop in at the Tour Cafe. It's the one with the signature yellow awnings.